Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final lecture of our second block of the Urban Modularity Project. Um, today, we will be talking about bioprinting. Um, Lucy Odromoko, a molecular bi biologist and uh, enthusiast in the field of 3D printing, will be talking about applications and perspectives in biology and medicine of 3D bioprinting. Um, unfortunately, we had to reschedule this event, so uh, I hope people who um, wanted to join us previously will be able to join us today or at least watch the recording of this webinar. Um, Lucy will join us in a moment and begin her lecture. Hello. Hello, Lucy. Yes. Uh, nice to meet you guys. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you, but we don't see you at this moment. I will try. Oh yeah, now now we do see you. Oh, you're you're in a molecular biologist outfit. <laughs> I run my stuff right now, so <laughs> I have several minutes to make this presentation for you. So, okay, um, please welcome. Um, I will switch off my camera so you get the whole attention. Okay. So let me introduce myself. My name is Lucia Jamoko. I'm a molecular biologist. And uh, during my scientific uh, career, I was engaged into different projects we deal with gene engineering, neurobiology. And as a spin off, I was also deal with bioprinting as a part of my science art project. So today I want to tell you uh, several stories about 3D bioprinting and its applications and perspectives in medicine and in biology. So let's start. So what is bioprinting and uh, why it's so uh, uh, desired in medicine and biology? So bioprinting, it is a lower by lower position of life, and or life, of life cells and biomaterials which are resulted in uh, production of biofabrication in uh, special and special control and uh, with high accuracy, which can be, uh, which can be, uh, works as a real tissues. So uh, the average, uh, the, the usual printing uh, technique was uh, very uh, fitable for this uh, idea because the tissue organization by itself is uh, very uh, compatible. So if you look for the tissues, uh, we'll see that they have a very uh, accuracy in organization. Uh, we can see the cells which have uh, their own position and their own specialization which, which uh, helps them run their functions. And we see that their position is lower by lower and it's as simple as the printing manner of uh, fabrication of non-living materials. So, if we talk about the by printing uh, processes, so we have several steps. So the first step is to imaging. Uh, in the medical science, you can get many imaging with different medical devices like CT or MRI or X-ray. Uh, the principle of working of these uh, methods is that the different tissues have a different penetration for the uh, different waves of uh, gamma rays, for example, or for example, for radiation, if you use X-ray uh, methods. So the next step is more closer for uh, designers. So we have to design what kind of uh, uh, biofabrication blocks we want to use. Uh, because of the natural um, natural um, origin of the bioprinting, we can use the biomimicry uh, when we, for example, use the forms which resemble as the living forms 
we can sell the self assembly. It's a very uh, unique and amazing feature of the living materials, which can help them to assemble by themselves, uh, like they have the initial program. And we can use the mini tissues. It's kind of a Lego when you use different mini blocks to build the uh, bigger block or bigger tissue uh, to use as a for. So the next step is uh, material selection. So uh, to by print ourselves, we need kind of sheet uh, like a bio paper. So uh, it's usually called scaffold. So scaffold it's kind of uh, uh, special architecture or carcass which uh, are used to place the cells on it and which uh, uh, used to uh, maturate the cells and uh, to set them the uh, 3D form. Uh, so uh, you can use, uh, uh, for example, synthetic polymers, natural polymers, but the best of this uh, is the ESM, it uh, means the extracellular cell matrix. So uh, extracellular cell matrix you can get when you have uh, real organs and you try to desaturate the cells. And if you uh, put it in the special material, so we'll see just the uh, matrix kind of, uh, it will be kind of tree uh, without other cells. And uh, you can use it for uh, maturation uh, bowings, which can be used as a different of cells, pluripotent cells, and then multipotent cells. So uh, what about the bowings? So different cells, it's dull cells, which know they function, they know how to work, they know uh, uh, what kind of tissue they re uh, represent, and it's uh, easy to use them when you want to have a certain uh, tissue, and when you want, when you know the, what kind of function you are uh, expect from this tissue. Pluripotent cells, uh, it's uh, the young cells with a high potency to grow in any kind of cells. So, for example, if you talk about us, we all uh, have an origin for one pluripotent cell, and we have a built and full organism who have different functions, different tissues, different organs. So. Uh, it's maybe the, the most effective way to get the different kind of tissues when you use the pluripotent stem, stem cells. So uh, the next is the multipotent stem cells. They have a le level low. Is it sorry? Has, they have less uh, potent, uh, potency uh, than the pluripotent cells, but they are also good for the bioprinting. So uh, the step uh, number five is describe the bioprinting attempts and bioprinting methods, so like the injured method, micro extrusion, and laser assisted beam. So uh, the most wild, uh, widespread method is the micro extrusion. It uh, works like an average syringe. Uh, you just have a pump, and you have uh, uh, printed uh, your cells, for example, with, within the gel or without the gel on the surface. So it's uh, rather uh, it's rather good for cells because they uh, uh, alive because they alive have this kind of bio printing, but it have a lower resolution if we compare it to inject method or the laser assist method. Method. So inject method also applicable in bio printing. It's uh, uh, also well used, but it have its own uh, uh, its own. Uh, cons. Uh, I mean that uh, this kind of uh, uh, this kind of uh, equipment when we use inject presets, it's very hard to sterilize, and it may be very costly and expensive uh, to change the printing head when you try to change the uh, type of the bar inks, uh, and the most. Uh, accuracy and uh, the methods that have the highest resolutions, of course, the laser assisted. Uh, you mean uh, you use the laser beam to kick the cell and uh, it's precisely uh, put to the certain position of the lawyer. So you have the full control of the cell position if you compare it to the other methods. And it's also 
are not so damaged for cells. They can be alive after this position. So uh, the next uh, step is, of course, uh, um, sorry, uh, it's of course the um, the further application of this uh, uh, printed tissues or organs. So you can use the maturation uh, step if you want to, for example, some organs need the uh, additional maturation step in incubators because they are not so, they need the time to have a growth after, after printing and they need the time to have the, uh, considerate the function and uh, to be fully functional in the organ after transplantation. So also you can uh, make uh, the implantation uh, uh, right after the printing. If for example you use, if you, for example, you print the skin or some cartridge, because it's uh, not very uh, complex, complex uh, tissues and it's, uh, uh, have, they, they don't need the uh, step for maturation. And of course you can uh, uh, make a new testing because uh, it's also, um, is, printing is very uh, common in research work and you can, sorry, I some kind of, I see some of my background. Uh, maybe that's because I turned on the microphone. Sorry for interrupting you, but because uh, I just wanted to ask one clarification question okay. before we go further. Uh, what kind of uh, tissues are you talking about uh, in this example? What kind of uh, organs? Is it like full-sized organs or some parts of them uh, which need uh, maturation? before implantation and basically I'm talk about the tissues about the skin about the cartilage about the bones about the liver and kidney tissue uh, if we talk about the full organs it's not very easy to print uh, the full size human organ because it's really big and it's hard to uh, uh, stabilize it out the out of the body but in my presentation, I will talk about the recent attempt in bioprinting the organ. It's, it's, it's in a small size, but it's the first uh, uh, achievement in this, uh, in this uh, field. So uh, basically, we will talk about the tissues, I think, in this presentation. Okay, thank you. Sorry for interrupting you if you were going to cover it anyway. So. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. Uh, here you will, you should see the uh, table with points and the properties, but uh, something goes wrong with uh, slide. But I can discuss uh, it. Uh, uh, so, uh, borrowings it's the most important part of the bioprinting because uh, it's the most patent part. Uh, if when you choose bio inks, uh, you choose uh, the way how do you print your tissue and what you expected to uh, get from this bio printing. So uh, bio inks uh, have uh, three different types. So it's matrix inks, which helps uh, cells uh, to set on the surface and they just uh, uh, play the support role. Also, uh, the other type is the permanent support links. So uh, we usually use it for connective tissue, for example, like bones or cartilage uh, and muscle tissues also. It's a uh, need for the tissues when you, uh, which, which are uh, undergo for the uh, high strength. So uh, also, uh, the, um, we can use the temporary support links uh, it's uh, very important when you talk about vascular networks. It's the main challenge in the bioprinting, and uh, for the recent time, it was uh, unbelievable to print something like vascular uh, that will work in uh, outside the organ, outside the uh, biological organism, and this way of the matrix uh, will help us, uh, will help the uh, scientific community to have uh, this. Uh, uh, um, uh, to print the vascular uh, networks uh, about two years ago, I think. So uh, let's change the slide because it's uh, 
not too informative without cutting this picture. So uh, the main requirements for buying is that they should be non-toxic for cells because if they're toxic for cells, so there is no any sense to use it in bioprinting. And also it should be fit for the logical temperatures. I mean the temperature which are uh, usual or common for humans, so about the uh, 35, 36 degrees, and not to degrade these temperatures, not to be toxic. So, also for tissues, it's very important to be connected. So, uh, we can't use cross links not only for tissues, for the cells, but for the matrix. Uh, usually, it uses the ultraviolet light or blue light and special photopolymerization materials. Uh, that helps to uh, make a connection between matrix after printing. So uh, it will help to maturate cells well and uh, fill themselves uh, uh, better uh, during their growth in the matrix. And also we can use the calcium to make a connection between cells themselves. So calcium is a usual uh, activator of the adhesion between cells and they, uh, it's helped them to uh, produce connectors at synapses and uh, if you talk for example about uh, neural tissues and uh, it helps them to feel each other and uh, for cells it's very important uh, to grow well when they feel each other, when they feel their neighbors. So uh, if it talk about the recent uh, achievements and recent goals uh, in the bioprinting, it's of course the non-invasive in vivo GD bioprinting. So uh, the basic principle of this uh, method is that to use the near infrared light for polymerization, for in vivo polymerization of special monomers uh, incorporated with cells and to produce some kind of uh, uh, biofabrication inside the organism. So uh, why they use the near infrared light? Uh, they use it because it has the high penetration through the tissues and gets through deep in the tissues and can, uh, the, can start the process of polymerization. So uh, in this uh, paper, uh, they uh, try to uh, by print the ear and they will succeed in this. So this is a link you may check it and uh, see uh, the paper. Uh, and it's uh, very resemble means the project that was uh, uh, set up with uh, by Stellar on 2008 when he uh, also um, put a ear on his arm, but he used a, a surgical operation. And for example, if you try it uh, to repeat this experiment in 2020, it will be easier to do this with uh, new technology, I suppose. So, uh, sorry. Uh, the next slide is about the uh, world, world first uh, CD bear printing heart. I want to start the video. To be able to see it. So, uh, you will see how it was printed. Um, so, uh, uh, last year, uh, scientists from Israel, if you have some questions for me, I have a background. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask if it was the micro extrusion example. What yes, else? yes, it was a micro extrusion example. And it also uses support uh, uh, matrix for this uh, uh, for this method. Uh, sorry, yeah. I, I I see the cut of the picture. It was kind of uh, it was describing the concept of this uh, method, uh, but we have the main pictures on the slide. So uh, they use the uh, cells from the. It, the idea of this attack of this must was to personalize the uh, bioprinted organs. So they use, they use the patient cells to uh, get the IPS to get the pluripotent cells and then to differentiate them to the uh, cardiomyocytes and epithelial cells. So cardiomyocytes are, are, are 
build the muscle of the heart organ and the epithelial cells build the vascular system of the organ. So as I told earlier, the vascular is very hard to uh, hard to print by print and that's why they use uh, such kind of technology when they print it into, in, inside the gel. So uh, they use gel them as a uh, supporting system which can be uh, uh, help, uh, help, uh, help cells to uh, grow within it and of course they use some kind of special medium. It's not kind, it's, it has a special factors inside that, uh, that um, uh, helps uh, help cells to differentiate uh, in the right direction. So we see uh, how they uh, um, use printing uh, in this uh, um, in this stamp. So uh, also they use cross linking on the physiological temperatures, and then uh, they uh, extract uh, this heart from this uh, support medium and what they have. The finish. Uh, so uh, today we have a range of models uh, of commercial bioprinters, and uh, they print with high accuracy. They have a different kit of bowings. Uh, they have a, uh, different uh, possibilities to uh, have different to add different models, but it's rather expensive uh, if you want to just to have a try with bioprinting. So on the other side, we have a DIY bioprinter, which allows us customization, they're usually open source, uh, flexibility, and they rather, uh, rather cheap if we compare with commercial models. So uh, DIY bioprinting community is uh, developed uh, by uh, I think by the, by uh, not only by hackers but with engineers who are interested in biology, and I think uh, today uh, every interested person can uh, uh, can construct its own bioprinter at home for kind of uh, very uh, uh, easy experiments and can try uh, its uh, uh, its ideas on it. So. Uh, what how it looks like so you see the it's commercial types so it's kind of DIY uh, variant uh, it's uh, also successful in the bioprinting the living tissues uh, they usually uh, these uh, uh, researchers also publish the papers when they uh, describe how to build this bioprinter how how how, how to uh, optimize it and it's open sourced and you can uh, try it by yourself it's uh, there are, there are a lot of materials for for everybody who has for anybody who has a internet connection so if we talk about uh, my project uh, we also built the DIY by printer it was built from the ordinary TD printer with a little uh, modification so it's the inject type as you see, and uh, this allows us to make a high precision printing with bacteria cells. Why we use bacteria cells? Bacteria cells is less capricious as uh, if we compare to the ordinary mammalia cells, I mean human cells, for example, and it's easy to uh, fabricate it in a uh, home, home manner. So, uh, and also it's uh, uh, gives an opportunity for the range of applications. For example, you may uh, uh, produce a bacterial painting, you may make a drug screen, you may have a living tattoo, or, also, or you can run the scientific research. It all depends on your fantasy, creativity, and your ideas. Uh, for example, I would to show you how this bacteria could be used in uh, uh, as a living tattoo, uh, this project was ran uh, by MIT and it's uh, really interesting uh, because it's uh, uh, present how with a rather easy methods we can have a, uh, a living, um, living computer system. So I will show you the video.
Cells engineered to sense environmental chemical device. MIT engineers have devised a 3D printing technique that uses a new kind of ink made from genetically programmed living cells. The cells are engineered to light up in response to a variety of stimuli. When mixed with a slurry of hydrogel and nutrients, the cells can be printed layer by layer to form three-dimensional interactive structures and devices. The team has then demonstrated its technique by printing a living tattoo, a thin transparent patch patterned with live bacteria cells in the shape of a tree. Each branch of the tree is lined with cells sensitive to different chemical or molecular compounds. When the patch is adhered to skin that has been exposed to the same compounds, corresponding regions of the tree light up in response. The researchers say that their technique can be used to fabricate active materials for wearable sensors and interactive displays. Such materials can be patterned with uh, live cells engineered to sense environmental chemicals and pollutants as well as changes in pH and temperatures. To demonstrate the technique, the team printed a pattern of hydrogel with cells in the shape of a tree on an elastomer layer. After printing, they solidified or cured the patch by exposing it to ultraviolet radiation. They then adhered the transparent elastomer layer with the living patterns on it to skin. To test the patch, the researchers smeared, smeared several chemical compounds on the back of a tester's hand, then pressed the hydrogel patch over the exposed skin. Over several hours, branches of the patch's tree lit up when bacteria sensed their corresponding chemical stimuli. Uh, uh, this is example of the bacteria painting. So you see it's a uh, gene modificated bacteria with uh, uh, different fluorescent genes and uh, they express the uh, fluorescent proteins which have uh, special uh, colors and we see how it's uh, printed in abstract manner. So uh, it's very precise uh, position for bacteria who knows how they usually grow because usually they make some kind of uh, mono monoloid color and it's very hard to uh, have such a kind of uh, resolution. So the next one, for example, this one, this one. Uh, so also, as I by printing these bacterials, uh, open a opportunities for the new biomaterials. So uh, the living materials is very amazing by the uh, possible properties for sensing, for growth, regenerate, heal, or transform. Uh, just imagine, for example, that you have a not usual glass cover on your smartphone or you have a special biomaterial that could regenerate and it's uh, uh, better than any uh, gorilla glass. Uh, the most uh, research in this area uh, made by the Nere Oxman from IT Media Lab and uh, they very succeed in bioprinting a new kind of living materials and I also want to show you uh, the recent works with, uh, with this topic. object from a three-dimensional the process of making a physical object from a three-dimensional digital model is nothing new these days 3d printing is everywhere users are constantly coming up with new ways to utilize this technology to revolutionize a field or fabrication process and now an interdisciplinary team of researchers from MIT and elsewhere have developed a new way to print 3d objects that can control living organisms in predictable ways we're looking into ways that you can begin to integrate the tools we now have in genetic engineering into the processes for digital fabrication. 
When we 3D print, we utilize a multi-material 3D printer. One thing that we're doing differently is beginning to integrate chemical signals into the resins that we use. These chemical signals allow the 3D printed part to communicate to the cells that live on the surface of the 3D print. And in that way, the 3D print has a pre-programmed control over the genes that are expressed on the surface of the 3D print. For their initial proof of concept experiments, the team incorporated various chemicals into the 3D printing process. These chemicals then act as signals to activate certain responses in biologically engineered microbes, which are spray coated onto the printer object. Once added, the microbes display specific colors or fluorescence in response to the chemical signals. These colors, the researchers say, demonstrate the successful incorporation of the living cells to the surface of the 3D printed material and the cell's activation in response to the chemicals. Each color that you see appearing on the surface of these prints is actually the product of an enzymatic reaction, which is occurring because a cell has been given the signal to turn a gene on or off. What's interesting is anywhere that you see a color being expressed could very easily also be any other type of biosynthetic product created by a bacteria. That way, what you have is a new class of material that acts like a responsive or almost a pre-programmed intelligent material surface. The researchers call this new class of material hybrid living materials, or HLMs for short. The objective is to make a robust design tool for producing objects and devices incorporating living biological elements, made in a way that is as predictable and scalable as other industrial processes. The printing platform the team used allows the material properties of the printed object to be varied precisely and continuously between different parts of the structure, with some sections stiffer and others more flexible, some are more absorbent and others liquid repellent. Such variations could be used in the design of biomedical devices that can provide strength and support while also being soft and pliable to provide comfort in places where they are in contact with the body. The researchers suggest that useful chemical substances such as vitamins, antibodies, or antimicrobial drugs could be integrated into a wearable interface, customized to fit the physical body and biomarkers of its user. Or consider smart packaging that can detect contamination or environmentally responsive architectural skins that can respond and adapt in real time to environmental cues. So uh, I think it's uh, really amazing. And because of nature is very rich of uh, different interesting pro uh, proteins with uh, uh, fantastic uh, uh, properties. For example, if we talk about the spadroin, it's a special protein from the uh, spider, spider, spider uh, silk. And it's uh, stronger, it's more stronger than the steel uh, in uh, several hundred times and nowadays uh, scientists can produce it in uh, bacteria and for example if we use this bacteria for bioprinting we can uh, produce kind of amazing material which uh, which biofabricated the spidroin and uh, allows us to have a very very strong material is that that's not uh, uh, use usually uh, uh, common uh, in fabrication. So uh, the next slide is uh, the new temp of the bioprinting, as I suppose it's Argonauts. So Argonaut is kind of uh, modeling of, of the uh, to the structure of organisms. It's uh, rather close to the bioprinting because they also use uh, the light techniques to have a 3D structures with a uh, to imitate the tissues and organs in petri dishes. But uh, nowadays, they usually do it by the, their hands, and uh, that's why have, they have low accuracy. They have, uh, there is no precise in this uh, technology nowadays, but the bioprinting, I think, will bring the new level of the algorithmic fabrication. What's so important? Uh, it's important because organoids can be used in uh, different uh, research ways like disease, like uh, uh, discover the disease mechanisms, uh, in toxicology studies, in drug discovery, uh, to imitate and to try to 
uh, finds the ways to heal a different infection disease because they Im they imitate they can can imitate different organs like uh, livers, like lungs, like even brain. And uh, it also can be useful in, in regenerative medicine. For example, if we talk about the uh, organoids of the retina, they can be implanted to the bl uh, blind people uh, and uh, it will help them to, uh, 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 to get their vision back. So, and also it's very interesting to use the organoids in development and stem cells biology because uh, the uh, Organoids uh, can uh, uh, can behave like the real organisms. Uh, the uh, recent paper, scientific paper, shows that organoids can be used to imitate the embry embryonic state of development. So uh, I suppose if we uh, try the bioprinting in this uh, area, in this field, we can uh, make some uh, uh, attempts to get the bioprinted embryos like stems, embryo organoids uh, that can be resemble all the human uh, stages of development before the birth. It's very important because uh, nowadays we have restrictions from the governments uh, that uh, prohibited us to study the development of the human organism till the, uh, within the 14 days. Uh, and after this uh, period of time, we need to cancel our experiments because it's uh, uh, not ethic uh, uh, if we based on this instruction. And uh, the ergonomics will help us to understand what is going on because uh, scientists will use not uh, human cells, uh, human embryos, but they will use, uh, for example, IPS human IPS and reprogram them to the embryos like themselves and embryo uh, uh, organoids uh, to study the human development uh, as human development the period after the 14 days. So the, I think that the bioprinting is very perspective in this way and it can bring us uh, the new insights, for example, in different development, uh, development diseases like uh, mental diseases, for example, or uh, genetic diseases and also can be help us for uh, drug discovery because uh, nowadays we use the uh, animals for the drug testing and after the uh, after th these studies we move to the people and it also could be very dangerous for people for people because some drugs candidate can be toxic for them and uh, this uh, uh, technology like by pretty organoids can be reduce the risk for uh, all steps of the drug producing uh, pipeline. So uh, it's. I think it's all uh, for my for me. So if you have some questions, you can ask me. Lucy, uh, this was very interesting and even shocking at some at some moments. Um, we have some, actually we have one question from, from the visitor. Uh, when do you think it will be possible to print or make a heart, liver, or a kidney, which can be transplanted to, to a human, I guess, like 10 years, 50 years, or like, what, what do you think? I think that with technology that we have nowadays, it's rather, um, uh, it's hard to print the full or the full human organs, but uh -huh. uh, I think we can combine technologies like uh, biofabrication in incubators and printing to get the result. But I think it will be not the fully functional organ as we want uh, as we expected, uh, because uh, uh, they uh, have a very um, sophisticated organization and uh, this, uh, for example, liver is really the most uh, uh, the most hardest organ to print nowadays. Uh -huh. It's easy to print the tissue, uh -huh. tissue, but the full organ is very very hard to print because it's have many function, and it's uh, uh, diff difficult to imitate it with uh, bioprinting by today technologies. Uh -huh. 
Well, as far as I see, uh, the like the transplantation method should be discarded at some point, and it will be a combination of technologies of uh, like the way you said that it is printed inside of, of 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 the patient or something like that, or using stem cells to. Uh, promote uh, the body to grow a new organ instead of uh, the one not working something that's how I imagine it in 50 years or something like that um, so talking about your example about this ear on arm the the, the shocking example you you gave uh, but do you think he actually like this ear on on the arm, did it actually uh, work inside of the body? Obviously not in the hearing way, but in the way of uh, using uh, blood from the organism, exchanging exchanging all the all the cells. What do you think? Or it's just like a silicon implant or something like that? Uh, it's kind of silicon implant, but of course it have its own. Uh, it's have a vascular because it uh -huh. like uh, uh, human body is uh, try to cover to surround every new uh, parts inside it with uh, blood and build the vascular system, the vascular network around it. But it's not functional, so it's. Uh -huh. So I guess he had to remove it at some point, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but it was uh, it was done uh, more than twelve years ago. So. Yeah, yeah. So I, I guess the technology went further. Uh, I, I I was lost a little bit when you started talking about organoids. Uh, could you could you just explain once again in simple way what is it? it what's so organoids also use the cells to build uh -huh. the organs like structure. So uh -huh. for example, you want to build uh, a brain, yeah? Uh -huh. So you may, uh, you may uh, try the differentiated cells, dot cells, which are already functional like brain, or may, you may use the uh, pluripotent cells to differentiate them, uh, brain-like cells. So uh -huh. you put them in the special, uh, order on the petri dish, give them a special medium to grow, mm -hmm. activate them in a special manner, and, and then they will uh, uh, grow like an uh, organ, for example, like a brain. So you may, you may, to, uh, you may to give them a certain condition. For example, mm -hmm. uh, our cells have a plasticity inside. And if, if you uh, put oneself in surrounding a different cell, it can be uh, reprogrammed in other type. So that's, what, that's how, for example, cancer cells works. They reprogram cells around them in cancer cells mm -hmm. because they have very aggressive uh, environment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and, uh, but it also works for the, for the other cells, for example, you may transform them for other type and you can uh, just imitate the organs of the dishes. For example, you can imitate the lungs, you can imitate the uh, brain. Uh, now it's, uh, the recent uh, study was to imitate the lungs because of COVID mm -hmm. viruses. Yeah. So, uh, because as I told you, it's easy to uh, drugs uh, to make a drug screening on this uh, model than to try it on mice because uh, on animals because what what works on animals not usually works on humans mm -hmm. and it could accelerate the uh, drug discovery mm -hmm. so uh, the face mask from another slide of yours seems seem to be pretty relevant as well um, so basically you think that the, the good way of um, exploring is trying to use organoids, uh, print some basic structure of an organ, and then trick the cells to, to, to actually grow the organ, something like that, right? Yes, yes. Organoids uh, could also be used as a transplantant. For example, uh -huh. I think if you, uh, if you have an organist of the retina, you can also mm -hmm. them use for for transplantants, for the blind people, as well as the uh, printing cells. 
and the source of those uh, cells could be embryos which are younger than 14, 14 days, right? It, because of the regulations. Uh, well, it also can be an adult. Uh -huh. For example, the better way to use your own cells if you want to have some kind of, mm -hmm. if, if you are, uh, if when you are donor and when you are a young. So uh -huh. um, with different techniques, the cells can be reprogrammed. For example, they can from adult st state reprogram to the uh, young state and then to another adult state. So you can uh, take the skin cell, reprogram it to the young uh, state, and then reprogram it to the nerve tissue, nerve cells. And uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's, uh, there are different uh, approaches, uh, and it's uh, uh, you can get uh, it's nerve cells, you can get uh, kidney cells, you can get uh, cardiomyocytes, and so on. It's not very easy, but it works. So uh, then you may uh, uh, get the special condition for the cells because everything is important for the uh, functioning. Uh, they are uh, very sensitive to the uh, geometry of the surface where they placed on. They are very uh, sensitive to the medium where they placed on also. And all these uh, conditions help them differentiate in the right way, in the right uh, organ-like type. And for example, if you uh, give them uh, the special medium, they can differentiate in, uh, uh, in kidney cell, in kidney-like structure. And mm -hmm. the kidney-like structure will be resemble the function and the properties of the real kidney. And mm -hmm. you can test the drugs not on the human kidney because, not on the humans because it needs to time and all the documents, but you uh, have, yeah. yes. Artificial organ. Yes, yes. And the mice, it's animals, it's not so good for, uh, for the some reasons because uh, sometimes what, what works on mice, it's very toxic for humans or not mm -hmm. at all, but you lost your time. You lost your mm -hmm. time, you lost mm -hmm. your money, and uh, at all, people don't have a drugs in the market as a result. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a very, very interesting uh, topic. I really hope uh, that you can visit us in our lab sometime. Uh, I know you're now building a second 3D printer. Uh, again, if you need any help or you need any equipment that we have available, please be our guest. Uh, we'll try to help you as long as we can. Uh, thank you for this very informative uh, lecture. Uh, do you have anything else to say? No, oh, I'm happy to present it for the people who are interested in bioprinting and, and I believe that they will have some kind of community around the world and community which connect with fab labs in the city, with scientists, we can accelerate this, uh, accelerate this uh, technology, uh, because I think that the uh, bioprinting uh, will be developed uh, more, not in, should be developed not in labs, but also outside labs. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm trying to struggle with, uh, not only plastic 3D printing in the, in the fab labs. I want to make other, other uh, applications of this the, um, technology with other materials and biomaterials are really, really promising. Um, okay, thank you for your time. Thank you for your lecture. Uh, thank you visitors for visiting us. Um, again, this was the last lecture of this block and we will make a pause until we get back in September or October, depending on when our lab will be officially allowed to be open. And then we'll have another block of lectures and a, hopefully a offline workshop on 3D, advanced 3D printing methods. So um, please uh, Google for urban modularity in higher school of economics and you will find our page and there is a uh, application form where you can register for our workshop. I don't know, 
the exact dates of the workshop, uh, but they, as soon as we know, we will publish them and email everyone who was interested. Um, again, thank you and goodbye. Bye.